Barcelona Olympic Games 92 basketball. It's sort of hard to put in words what it all means. I mean, it's probably more so meaningful to me than any of the other guys, especially, you know, uh, being out of basketball for a year. Uh, thought this would never, ever happen to me again in terms of uh, getting an opportunity, uh, having the HIV virus, uh, all that makes it even more, much more important to me. But uh, I think that all the things I have accomplished in basketball from 12 years, two years in college, three years in high school, three years in junior high, on and on and on, would never compare. If you put them all together, would never compare to this one, uh, what, three, four, two month run. For the goal. It was a legend even before its arrival in Spain. The USA Dream Team, the finest assemblage of basketball talent ever. Its mission reclaim the gold for the United States of America. And its quest began at the Tournament of the Americas in Portland, where Michael, Magic, Sir Charles and company dished out an early warning. The dream team would not return from Barcelona without Olympic gold. Time for America to reclaim its title as the top basketball country in the world. We just want to say this is just a small step to what our goal really is, to get to Barcelona, win the gold medal, and bring it back where it's supposed to be. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marv Albert, and welcome to an historic look at the memories of the 1992 U.S. Basketball Dream Team. The following story bears no mystery, but does include some of the best moments in international basketball history. A dream team for America a nightmare for its opposition. Unlike many of their Olympic brothers and sisters, these athletes were superstars before they competed here. So it was no surprise they were treated to celebrity accommodations and care. Beat, beat that way. Well, they did take a few detours, and as Scotty Pippen found out, it was well worth it. Oh, man. The sights of Monaco were something to behold, and Team Dream must have thought their dreams had come true in this exotic paradise. Oh, man, it's a rough life. Watching the people swim. Getting ready to have dinner with the Prince. Eating Prince Rainier may have been the crown jewel of the trip, but the Americans were here for business as well. Blowing out France in their final tune-up, they were ready to torch their Olympic competition. You know anything about Angola? They in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> they in serious trouble. The U.S. exploded out of the gates in game one. By dismantling an overmatched Angolan squad, they sent an early message to the rest of the Olympic field. Magic with the spin. Finds Burr. Burr for three. Yes! And Seisau stopped by Drexler. And Pippen leads the break. Finds Barkley. Criticized by the press and his teammates for a flagrant elbow, Sir Charles took the incident in stride. Somebody hit me, I hit him back. That's simple. 
It's not a big deal to me as far as I'm concerned. It's over with. I'm not even thinking about it. I'm thinking about Croatia. And that meant Tony Kukoc, a man Jordan and Pippen took delight in shutting down and humiliating. Kukoc was a non-factor, but Magic's pulled hamstring was. The U.S. was now without both its point guards, but they never missed a beat. The Americans crush Croatia, Germany, and Brazil by an average margin of 40 points. Basketball has found a home along the sun-baked beaches of Barcelona, and as the U.S. prepared to play Spain, local fans were torn between which idol to root for. Magic Johnson, Jordan, Jordan, Larry Bird, Jordan, and Jordan. Magic, Magic Johnson. No. no, the best is Epic. The 33-year-old Spanish legend never left the bench, but teammate Jordi Biacampa gave the host country something to cheer about. A 22-9 second-half run helped Spain pull to within striking distance before succumbing to the dream team's superior talent and maybe even a little luck. Barkley puts it up to Pippen. Those two didn't believe they could pull it off themselves. The Olympics are much more than about winning. They're about friendships. And Epi and Magic embraced the Olympic spirit. The mood turned more serious in the medal round after thrashing Puerto Rico. Next up was Lithuania in the semis. Four of their players starred on the 88 gold medal Soviet team, and the Americans were ready to avenge that loss. Here's a three on two. Kevin. For the United States, it was on to the gold medal game. For the Lithuanians, just being on the court with the dream team was a major accomplishment. The Lithuanians would win a bronze medal in their first Olympics since 1936. A playoff-like atmosphere filled Palau de Spores for the gold medal showdown. A rematch with Croatia and Tony Kukoc. The dream team was determined to end this one quickly and came out firing. Jordan off the spin. Yes. Magic on a pick and roll. <laughs> Led by Kukoc, Croatia refused to roll over and battled back, grabbing the lead midway through the first half. But this team's dreams would not be ruined. The U.S. once again turned pressure defense into spectacular aerial displays at the other end. And we're joined by the czar of the Telestrator who spent most of his uh, Monte Carlo time in the shallow end of the swimming pool. I believe it was the kiddie pool. On a serious note, Mike, do you feel that uh, other American athletes will resent the preferential treatment uh, given the uh, men's basketball team? I'm sure that there are certain members of the U.S. contingent that are jealous, that have animosity towards this U.S. dream team. But we go back to when USA Basketball sat down with the NBA Players Association, laid out this entire plan of bringing the pro players into the Olympics, and I'm sure this was a major point with the players, the fact that they wanted the first-class treatment that they're used to during the entire NBA regular season. The United States wanted the best possible basketball team representing them. Well, they got it. The dream team, after the early scores at least, in the exhibition games and qualifying tournament, seemed to be the greatest collection of basketball talent ever. The games were played on the new Palau de Spores, located in Barcelona, an industrial town outside Barcelona. Chuck, what's your feeling about the uh, the arena? It's your, I know it's not your first look, but it's the first time the club has worked out. Well, the arena's come a long way since I was here last June. It was uh, a lot of sawdust and uh, cement, and uh, they've done a marvelous job. Uh, it looks much bigger than the uh, 13,000 that they've anticipated, but I guess that is the number. Magic Johnson is one of only seven athletes to win the NBA title, NCAA championship, and win a gold medal.
Magic was back. But then playing Croatia in game two, the Dream Team lost its co-captain. Pop right now for the USA team. Magic Johnson is grabbing his right calf. He was injured on that last play, and already with John Stockton out due to a leg injury, if Magic should have to go out, that will really put them at a disadvantage as far as running the show, the point guard spot. But as Johnson sat out the next two games, he was still very much a part of the team and a part of the dream. because I was finding magic again. <laughs> Instead of limping up and down, yeah. And, um, you know, I made some things happen, and um, I, I just love being back and um, not just out there as a decoy, so to speak, um, but out there trying to be a threat and also trying to get us going. the oldest Olympic basketball gold medalist ever. At 35, still the one who made it look easy. think about the Olympics every, every time they come around every four years and you always dream that one of these days maybe you know you'll be able to play on a team or you'll be able to get there but uh, you know it's so far out of reach that you're never going to be able to do it but it's a dream and now that you're here it's, it's a great opportunity to, to uh, just be a part of it. You know, I, I think that when the other teams see our team, they, everybody says, well, I'll guard Charles Barkley because he's the smaller of the group. And once he starts to play, <laughs> Charles makes it look so easy, and he's just out there having fun, he'll get you 25, 30 points a game and with ease and play 20 minutes a game. So I, he probably impressed me. I always knew he was a great basketball player, but against these guys over here, they, they have no shot of guarding him. Michael's a great person, and he's great for the league. He's probably the best I've ever seen. They always talk about magic. They always talk about Dr. J, but I've never seen anyone carry himself like Michael Jordan. He's the man, and everybody knows it, and the rest of the guys on the team know it, and that's why we're, we're doing so well over here. Michael Jordan served his country well. He averaged 17 and a half points per game and led the team in minutes played.
You know, we were like 12 hired Clint Eastwood. They sent us over here to do a job and we basically did it. For the most part, we, you know, we stood tall and you know, we accomplished our jobs. We all know about the recent growth of basketball and how well things have gone. But the folks here at Barcelona and the Olympics have done a tremendous job in taking basketball and Michael Jordan to some unbelievable heights. Another steal. Here's Jordan. All right, sit down, ball. Sit down. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Yeah, I think I did anyway. That's not bad. Better than where I hit it earlier today. What, what has this Olympic experience been like for you? Well, it's been like a vacation to me. I mean, uh, I haven't really taken it too seriously. I mean, you know, when we play, I want to win, I want to compete. But uh, for the most part, it's given me an outlet for relaxation away from home. It, 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 it's gave me, uh, it's given me a lot of time to spend with guys that I've played with um, or played against for many years in competition and, and now I get to know these guys personally in a, in a competitive situation so I, I think I, it's been very helpful. I'm glad I came. You know, um, I really had some, uh, some thoughts that I wouldn't want to come, I didn't want to come and when I got here you know, I was just happy to be here because of the, you know, the people and the players and everybody. They treated us real nice. The yardage is one about, that's 150 to the front of the green. And then you gotta add on for the, the pin, weather. which, you know, they don't have a pin sheet, so you gotta guess. Hogan used to do this all the time, you know, but I'm not Hogan. <laughs> so I figure this is about 120 to the front and another 15 yards back. So about 135. And I'm gonna hit a nine iron, I think. The 135 club, we're gonna see if, if it's working today. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm afraid of, if it's working today. Come on now. My baseball swing. Come on in, ball. It didn't come no, that's going to get him the green. But... A little short. Sure is. Well, sure. Little but light. They knew what they were getting into when they brought us here. All 12 different personalities, all 12 different people, all 12 different businessmen, all 12 different conflicts. And I think they, they kind of forgot how, how the conflict would help or would hurt uh, the situation. And it's been some compromising. And uh, I think it was, it's been a, a learning experience for the Olympic Committee as well as NBA and all the people that's been involved. But... Uh, I'm happy I've gone through it, but I've gone through it with, uh, you know, I'm trying to stand tall for whatever I believe in, you know, and that's hopefully within the American system. My putting stroke that I've learned from a couple of my, uh, my buddies on the tour, so let's see if I can make it a tour shot. Come on, get up there, ball. Think I can make that? I, I think it works today. Well, I think this is a little inside right. And if I put it perfectly, I should make it. But I got a lot of pressure on me, so I don't know. Oh! Cameras, man. Them cameras do it to me every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't improve on this hole. Still haven't put this hole. Yeah, it's a bogey hole, but... Sir Charles Barkley was the team's most outspoken player and team's leading scorer. You know what we think about Angola? They in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> they in serious trouble. This guy.
guy from uh, Angola that you the elbow at, a lot of people said, why do this? These well, they, guys are overmatched. Overmatched. I, I, if, I, if I play against anybody, I'm going to hit them. That's the way I play. Now, here it is, right here. Now, had he hit you at all or what? Uh, I think they were playing physical, but I like that. That's the way the game should be played. I just want to win. I'm not out here to win friends. And these guys, they don't, you know, these countries don't like us, and we're here to win basketball games. See, now, right there what you said, somebody at home says, wait a minute. You are here to win friends. You're going to win the game. It's an no, international no. festival, and you have to be diplomatic. Well, that's because they don't understand. This is strictly business for, uh, for basketball. This is not about making friends or making enemies. These, we're here to make basketball universal so it can expand it commercially. Uh, for the NBA and for USA Basketball, we're not foolish enough to believe we're just here to represent the United States. But apparently some of your teammates disagreed. I think Michael and maybe somebody else said, Charles has to understand the spotlight's on us. We can't appear to be bullies. We have these guys well, so overmatched. We've got to be nice all, guys. Uh, Michael and they're entitled to their opinion, but they don't run my life. I mean, I'm a grown man, and I play physical. I play aggressive, but uh, I don't check in with other guys when I make decisions in my life. I mean, we're all individuals. We're not all going to think the same. We're not all going to be the same. But I'm 30 years old, and I do things my way, and that's the way I am. Kicked you off in the game against Croatia, I think it was. Uh, you were yelling something at the crowd. Apparently, the crowd was. Uh, you know, on it you. wasn't. It wasn't anything bad. But the guy says, "No talk to public." You know, the officiating has been up and down here. But uh, I, I like talking to the crowd. I would never last an NBA game, but they thought they gave me a technical for talking to the crowd. What's been the funniest thing? That's happened on the floor. Have any of these guys from other teams more or less given you an indication like, "Hey, we're just going." going through a scrimmage for you guys. We're the, we're the Washington Generals, and you guys are the I, Harlem Globetrotters. I, I think what's weird is some of the teams be asking you, can they have your game shoes or can they have your jerseys? I think that's pretty funny. You know, I'm like, no, you can't have my shoes, you can't have my jersey. You're just going to get beat and go home. the experience in Monaco. Two quotes jump out. One about the uh, nude beaches and the other about dining with royalty. Were you quoted accurately? Uh, I, I think it was. It's been to, for, for the players. And, I, and I, I feel like I can't speak some of the players. It's been a dream time spending quality time together, getting to know everybody. Uh, the only thing about it, the, the media has been so negative because it's a foregone conclusion that we're going to win the gold medal. So every little thing, whether it's if we, if we had practice one day and some guys didn't want to practice, you know, every little thing is some, uh, a major problem. But it's not. You know, we just here having fun. What was the prince like? What was it like dining with the prince? Oh, they kept me far away from him. They didn't trust me around him. He told me he wanted to meet you. <laughs> well, he, you know what? He did come up and say hello to me, uh, the younger Prince Abba. But Prince Rainier, they kept me away from him because they didn't want me to do anything around him. What'd they serve? What kind of hors d'oeuvres? Anything tasty? Uh, well... We got the best food in America, you know. It wasn't uh, it was good food, but they don't eat like we eat. You know, they don't give you no big portions. It wasn't no Southern mamas cooking. You know, <laughs> they give you a little tiny steak, a little piece of chicken, not no like four legs and a back like deal like I'm used to getting. <laughs> Is there any team here, if they played their best game and you guys were awful, every one of you, that could play a close game against you? No, because uh, we're not going to play bad, number one. And we have so many good players on our team. Like, I played terrible last night, but Carl played great. I mean, we, we, have, we, we could have let down from five or six players, but the other guys are so good. You know, those teams aren't used to playing against guys like this. They're not, they're not, 
they got some talented players, but they don't have enough one through 12 to compete with us for 40 minutes. Maybe it's not fair to look at how a guy like Detlef Schrempf does individually or Tony Kukoc because they don't have the team surrounding them and it's easier to concentrate on them. So maybe it's not fair. But talking specifically about Kukoc, a lot of people were interested to see how he'd do. What's your impression of him and how would he do in the NBA? Well, I think he's a, a very good player, but I see uh, Scott Pippen wanted to prove a point to him, and he proved it. Uh, he's not ready for the NBA right now. He might be a good player, but people got to understand uh, we are the best basketball players in the world, bar none. Um, there's that left is the best European player there is, uh, then followed by Sharunas Marcellonis. Those are two guys, and then comes David Drazen Petrovic. Those three guys have come to the NBA and proved themselves. These other guys cannot be scared. If they want to prove how good they are, the only way they're going to find out how good they are is to come over here to America. So you don't rank Kukoc with the three guys that are already in the NBA, right? No, because uh, you can't. He proved if he if he's gonna if he's as good as everybody said he was, he should have been able to get more than four points. I'm not saying I think he's a very good player, but I don't know how good he is until he comes over to the NBA. You think his game is soft, like a lot of European guys? Well, I think they're just not used to the type of athletic ability they're seeing. I think the biggest difference, some of these guys are good basketball players, but they're not used to seeing the athletic ability that we have, and that's the big difference. Have you come over here with the idea that this is now an international stage for Charles Barkley? You've taken advantage of the American stage. Everyone knows you're a quote machine. Some people laugh. Other people get annoyed. Is this a chance to take the act global? Not really. I think uh, I'm just here to have fun. I mean, I think the difference is what separates me from most athletes. I'm not out here to get endorsements. I'm just here to have fun. to be a monster, but I'm not a monster. I'm just a hard-working guy who I'm a, I'm a Malcolm X philosopher believer. I want to get it done by any means necessary, and that's about winning. The mailman, Carl Malone, was an enforcer and a Times team referee. In general, it appears that in international ball, there aren't going to be many power forwards who can match your blend of muscle and speed. Well, I just try to go out and play. I think on this team, we have such great athletes that if you can get the ball off the, off the boards and run the floor, nine times out of ten, you'll get it back because we have great athletes. So uh, myself and, uh, and Charles run the floor really well. So we got a lot of easy layups, which we know as it go on, they might get shorter and shorter, but we're trying to do it right now. Maybe some of those layups are too easy. When you win by 68 points, people are looking for something to write about. And tonight, the wire services are writing about Charles Barkley's elbow to the chest of an Angola player in the midst of a 46-1 to run in the first half. Did you see it, and what did you think about it? Well, first of all, uh, I'm, I'm a really good friend with Charles, and, and we talk to Charles a lot. Uh, he's a guy that, that played with a lot of emotion, but on the other hand, it's already some bad vibes about the dream team already. Sure, it's millions of people who want to see us win, but it also is those out there that say we're spoiled athletes and things like that. And to me, I don't think it was any place for it. I'm just basically calling it like I said, and I think Charles feel like that because the worst thing we want to do now is have those same people turn against us that's been following us for all these times. And you never know what might trigger people to say jump off that bandwagon, which we like that they're on it. And I think not just me, but I think all the other guys echo that same thing. You don't do things like that because you need to represent yourself in a professional way because we are representing the USA.
So as his buddy, you might seek to have one more conversation with Charles just to say this isn't necessary. Oh, absolutely. And I think if I don't, I'm not doing him a favor. Or better than that, I'm not doing this team a favor. Everybody on this team is equal. And we are called the dream team, and there's 12 of us playing on this team. And we don't need one guy out there doing something that's going to reflect on the whole team. Jim, we are here to take care of business and do it the right way. And that's our whole attitude. And we feel we're the best. And they feel they're the best. So we'll see what happens, but we're excited about playing. Scotty Pippen, after two straight NBA championships, found his trip to Barcelona was golden. what this being on this team uh, what this experience is like you know just just all of this it's it's, it's great I mean um, to have an opportunity to come together the greatest group of guys group of players in the world and not really have to go out and compete against them for us to come together as one and play together it's it's wonderful because when we go on the court now I mean we just thinking about really getting those 40 minutes over because we know we're going to win, and we know we're going to win big. To be a part of this team and play for the United States uh, is the greatest thing I, I, I think that could ever happen to some of us because, you know, I tease a lot of the guys like David and Charles and John and Carl about having a ring. You know, I, I can't tease Magic and Larry, but <laughs> I can tease them and Clyde. So this is sort of a, a, a big step for them, really, you know, to have an opportunity to go up and, celebrate for something that, you know, no one else in the, in the world would have, at least in this year of 1992. Here's Pippen for three. You know, I've talked to some of the guys, and, you know, you, you ask them questions about who's been the most impressive person uh, and an impressive player, and they've said you. Does that surprise you? Yeah, it, it does, because, you know, when you look at this this team, it's, it's hard to say who really surprised you. But, you know, I, I, I guess it's more harder for me because I'm, I'm playing with Michael, and, and people tend to think that, you know, everything I, I do is dictated by Michael because he's such a great player. But, you know, I, it's, it's tough for me to get my just because I'm playing with Michael. <laughs> and, you know, you have to really do a lot to try to, Get a little of the spotlight, you know, from a guy as good as Michael. But you know, it's 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 been wonderful. I think playing with Michael it, it complements both of us really because uh, we're, we're both sort of the same caliber player, and we're able to really uh, complement each each other with our style of play. Who's the team jokester? Every everybody throws a, a little crack in every once in a while, but if I had to really pinpoint somebody, I would have to say it's Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley. You know, that, that, let me ask you something, because speaking of that, now Charles Barkley is made, they say Charles Barkley say that you remind him of the, of the mascot. <laughs> he, he just look just looked like Kobe. He does. He's got the, like the pointy head and uh, his nose sticks out a little bit. He looks just like Kobe. I mean, I'm serious. You throw a pair of those little slick glasses on him, he looks just like Kobe. He accepts this very well, of course. Oh, the man is not handsome. He is not a handsome individual. I ended up giving Charles that, that name last summer. So, so now he tries to throw the store back at me to let all the guys think that, you know, he was the mastermind to think of it, but, you know. So he stole yours. Right. And back comes Croatia. Kuko. Got a return and Pippen with the steal, three on one. And it's Pippen again. Scotty Pippen has excelled. He was inserted into the starting lineup by...
Chuck Daly, he wanted the matchup with Tony Kukoc. All right, you did have one concern in a game earlier, some extra motivation when you played Tony Kukoc of Croatia. I know you were unhappy at the efforts that uh, Jerry Krause made at signing him earlier. You were a little bit insulted by that. Was there a sense of satisfaction in holding him down to four points in that game? Yeah, it was definitely a sense of satisfaction, but that wasn't the most important thing to me. I think the most important thing that what we wanted to do was beat this team. We heard that they were supposed to be in our toughest challenge, and we want to go out and show people that no, no one's going to be able to stay with the dream team, period. Here's a three on two. Patrick Ewing, who just finished a grueling NBA season a few weeks before his first dream team practice, was pleased with the results of his extended season in Spain, where his friendship with Larry Bird prospered. Bird and Ewing have developed a special relationship, and the Larry and Harry show is taking Barcelona by storm. You guys have started an unusual bond. Tell me about the Harry and Larry show. I don't know. We just got something going here that... Uh... After playing against Patrick for about eight years, Celtics has been beating his team so many times. Now he's trying to get good with me. Now he's on the same team, so he feels at home. Now, Patrick, you can't let him get away with that one. Oh, no, uh, Larry's been talking a lot of junk um, since day one. I think uh, it's been a lot of fun, you know, the Harry and Larry uh, stuff. He's a lot different than I thought he was. While these two certainly make up the dream team's odd couple, there's one question that everyone is asking. We know what Larry is, obviously. So, Patrick, what's his Harry all about? He come, he came up with it, so you know, <laughs> Larry, Larry, what's Harry? I don't know. It just uh, bleed off of Larry a little bit. And uh, since we hang around a lot together, it just everybody always says it's a Harry and Larry show. So right now we're just we're trying to get along right now. But since I've been making some passes of Patrick in practice and he hadn't caught any of them yet, I don't think I'm going to pass to him. Patrick, what, what drew you to Larry? Uh, I really don't know. I, I think... You know, it's his personality, uh, he, or lack of. <laughs> no, he, he's, he's very funny, he's quick. He has a great sense of humor, and um, and I pass. <laughs> and also, you know, I'm, I'm trying to pick his mind. You know, Larry is a, is a, he's a, he's one of the best players that ever played the game. And uh, I'm trying to pick his mind and see what he used to, what he did to, well, to, to get himself yeah, there. <laughs> Patrick said I could pick his mind. It took me three minutes. Now he gets a chance to come back and start picking on mine. It took me one. <laughs>the final, the Dream Team opened its customary lead, but then met its biggest challenge of the Olympic Games. And that's where we pick up the action. Patrick Ewing after missing his first three free throws, able to hit. And the U.S. leads 21-15. Petrovic working off the screen. Here's Pippen leading the break. Goes to the pull-up. Yes, Scotty Pippen who had an outstanding game against Croatia in that 33-point victory last week. Connecting on his first field goal. U.S. leads by eight. You can see Croatia after a made shot by the USA team controlling the tempo, walking the ball down the floor, trying to get into their half-court offensive set. The follow put home by Adapovic. Croatia down by six. The United States sweeping through the Olympics, winning all seven of its previous games by an average margin of 45 points per game. And the ball goes to Croatia. So the U.S. not able to put away here in the first half. We are still early. 10.44 remaining. And it's only a six-point game. The crowd reacts as Charles Barkley, who has been the star of the Olympics for the United States, has come on for the first time. The people's choice, Charles, enters the game, uh, acknowledges the crowd, some not quite cheering for him, but rather cheering, but he'll put on a show. They know that, and they love him here. Most of them love him. That's a three-pointer for Petrovic. Charles does have uh, his dissenters uh, here in Barcelona. United States leads by three. David Robinson has come on for the first time. The steal. And here's Adepovic. He blew it. But Petrovic able to put it home 
and we have a one-point ball game halfway through the first half. With Magic out of the game, John Stockton on the bench with the broken bone in his leg, you can see that it turns the United States team into a half-court game after made shots. Kukoc with Croatia having an opportunity to take the lead. And the foul is called. A strong move by Franja Adapovic to the hoop. He's given Croatia a one-point lead plus the foul. Turnover is something that played the Croatian team in the first game against the United States. This time, turning it around, picking up the steal, which leads to the fast break, and then the trailer down the middle finishes it off with a dunk. Adapovic. A 9-0 run for Croatia. David Robinson called for the foul. Seven foot, 270 pound. Franjo Adapova for the three point play. And Croatia leads the United States by the score of 25 to 23. 9.35 to go in the first half. Barkley for three. The U.S. leads by one. Charles Barkley, who normally does not look for the three pointers, and the straightaway shot, wide open. United States 26, Croatia 25. Here's Petrovic. Tabak is rejected. Barkley behind the back as a three on two for Drexler. The United States leads by three. After Barkley knocked out his first shot, the three-pointer from the top of the circle, he turned to the entire side in the stadium and signaled them as if to say, I'm ready to play. You're in for some show for me. Cool coach. And on a switch. Nice feed for Tabak. And Barkley tried to save it, but it was out of bounds. Barkley, one of the players who has the ability to lead the fast break after securing a rebound, goes behind his back and then playing unselfish at the other end, finds Clyde Drexel with the bounce pass. He loves it. And after watch. the ball went out of bounds, Barkley chased it, went over to the fans, had a little fun with him, and then brings it back. In basketball, America thought it had two dream teams, one made up of NBA stars, the other looking for a third straight goal. Favored to win the gold, veterans Teresa Edwards and Katrina McLean led the two-time champions on a romp through the preliminary rounds, including a 56-point thrashing of Czechoslovakia. And the shot is missed by Erica Bionova. Teresa Edwards. It was supposed to be easy. Plays like this were expected to leave rivals shaking their heads. With outstanding athletes from top to bottom, they were hailed as the best passing women's team in history. The only amateur on the team was high school coach Susie McConnell. But that sharpness was absent in a shocking semifinal loss to the unified team. Crispness turned to sloppiness, torrid shooting to horrid shooting, and gold medal dreams to bronze medal hopes. Something had gone wrong with the U.S. team's plans and disappointment, not dominance, was the order of the day. Their gold medal hopes shattered, the team rebounded with a strong defensive effort against Cuba, winning 88-74 to salvage a medal. We had to gather ourselves and start playing and not hang our head and come home with something and not come home empty-handed. So we're going to bring home the bronze and be happy with that.
Barcelona had never quite seen anything like the dream team. They came, they conquered, and they took home the gold. This 12-man machine was the essence of grace and style. They were unstoppable, a tower of aggression, a force of energy and strength unparalleled in the history of basketball. Their power was simply overwhelming. And now, with their mission accomplished, what would these gold medalists do? I'm gonna go home and relax. <laughs> Just gonna put my feet up in a lawn chair and kind of enjoy grass. I mean, there's no grass here in Spain. And uh, I enjoy the rest of my summer. I'm gonna get in my backyard, find my hammock. <laughs> and have a great time. Find, find the best book in the house and just have a great time. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, uh, the morning I get home, I start a basketball camp for kids. And uh, after that, I'm sure my wife's going to make me take a little vacation. I'm going to go to Hawaii and lay on the beach. Can't wait. Going home. <laughs> going home as quick as possible. And do what? Uh, rest a little bit and then try to get back in shape. I'm going to uh, just take my wife and go to Hawaii, relax for a little while, and then I have my Navy duties. Take a few weeks off and then start uh, training and practicing for uh, getting ready for Minnesota, hopefully. To sit back and let that basketball be, kind of rejuvenate a little bit before I hit back and defend the you know, championship for the third time. I mean, that, that's, that's tough. So the United States has won the gold. Not exactly an enormous surprise, but looking down the road, 1996, do you see the NBA players participating once again? I think without question, you'll still have NBA players involved on the Olympic team. The number of players involved, it may not be 11 out of 12 as it was uh, during this Olympic year. It may be a, a split between collegiate players and NBA players. But the win and the way it happened was good for basketball internationally. For years, our players have been put up as the, uh, the examples, uh, individual youngsters trying to emulate their stars. Now they see the team game at its best. It's a, a case where teams from other countries can now try to compare their level of play to that of the United States. How do you think the college players would have fared against some of the better teams in this field, such as Croatia? I think our best collegiate players still would have won the gold. They would have not had an easy time of it, but providing they had proper training time, a chance to practice together, and a staff that was in place. I'm not so sure that selecting a new staff every four years was the right way to go. Give them a chance to play together, have them coached by a group that have been together for a while. I think they still would have won the gold with our best players. Okay, and we thank you for sharing these moments on the trail of the gold medal here in Barcelona. For Mike Fratello, I'm Marv Albert. Thanks for watching. Pippen has a three on two. Oh, he it. <laughs> he loved that one. He knew from half court he was going to get the ball back again. Trexler took off at the foul line to throw it down. Pippen behind the back for her. Behind the back and in traffic. United States with a one-point lead, George with the steal. George with the stop. And the pressure continues now. Magic Johnson drops back. Michael George was so keyed up for this game that he's mentioned a couple times to Chuck Daly over the last few days. Coach, I don't care if I only play four minutes in each of the rest of the game. I want to play a lot of minutes in the game against Croatia. George shoots the gap, anticipating the inbound pass, and then the great finish. Three on two for the United States. Jordan behind the back to the trailer by Drexler. It almost looked as if Michael was going behind his back to Chris Mullen in the left lane on the three-man break, but instead it was to the fourth man in on the break, the first trailer down the middle of the floor by Drexler. 
Again, back to the drafting defense, the U.S. Navy trying to force turnovers, looking down the road to make things happen, and there it is, they produce the steal. Magic wins! So Nelson Sardinia has joined a long list of NBA players. He has been posterized by Michael Jordan. Oh, 